Now the engineer, this principal engineer of Virginia, who's grappling with all of these technical issues, uh, had a difficult problem working, uh, interacting with uh, the people who were in, in inside the chain of authority. And getting a sense of this helps us understand the meaning of the engineer as a person. Who was this engineer in relationship to the project, to the state, and to the people? The state legislature, the General Assembly that had authorized the pro project, consisted of part-time gentry, basically. People they went to the legislature even today, um, uh, work in January and February, and have to have some kinds of positions that enable them to, to have that time off. The state legislature tended to intervene and meddle with the, uh, the details of construction by putting into law some specifics about a particular road. And so the engineer had to deal with meddling in a way from the state legislature. The Board of Public Works was responsible for, for um, basically uh, authorizing the funds for, uh, for the chartered uh, turnpike companies and uh, supervising the engineer, but the engineer didn't have any authority inside of the Board of Public Works. So the engineer is, again, outside the legislature, outside of the Board of Public Works. The P Board of Public Works funds the Chartered Turnpike Company, uh, run by turnpike officials. In our case, the Blacksburg Christiansburg Turnpike is run by local officials from Blacksburg and possibly from Christiansburg. This company is, um, in order to get the road built, we look for contractors. We give the contract to, contract to the lowest bidder. Our job, or our, our interest, and indeed our responsibility, was to maximize the rate of return on our investment. And so our, our goal is to get people onto the road as quickly as possible. From the point of view of the engineer, then, the Chartered Turnpike Company isn't working in terms of the public interest. And again, the engineer is outside. The engineer is not inside of the company. Uh, the company hires the contractors. Contractors have serious problems. How do you hang on to a labor force? Um, that's basically unskilled labor in the United States. We don't have an established craft tr tradition as the British did. They were paying in the 1830s, 1840s, good, good, a good wage of 75 cents a day. But the contractors and laborers I mean, had very short, very much short-term vision. Their goal was just to complete the road, however. So the engineer, not working then, directly with a contractor either. So who was this engineer? The, and what, were the, what was the engineer's job? The, jo the engineer was somehow representing the state, the people as a whole, bringing theory to bear in a technical project, but working on each specific project as basically a consultant. Employed by the state, working as a consultant on, pro on private projects. There's the mixed enterprise system. His job included writing specifications. Before an advertisement was placed for bids, he had to complete an exact detailed description of the desired road based upon a, a plan and the field notes, uh, field notes that he collected um, uh, out on location. And his job and, and his responsibility was to try and make this as specific as possible. If the company wished, he would draw up specifications on every single detail of construction and then inspect for faithfulness as the work progressed. And indeed, a lot of times the Board of Public Works would um, uh, expect that he would be in charge of inspecting a, 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 uh, the progress of, of construction on a road to make sure that the, that the contractors and the turnpike company was fulfilling its commitment to the state. Now, Crozet, so, so now picture yourself as working on, uh, working on a particular turnpike project as a contractor, as a turnpike official. Uh, for the most, most of the time, during most of the project, we're, we're, we just fulfill these specifications as laid out with no engineers around. Every so often, Crozet rides into town, again, as the Lone Ranger. And uh, our job was to try and get him to, to, uh, to be happy with the progress. Well, more often than not, he was not. 
Um, but what role did he have? What could he say? What influence could he have over the Turnpike Project? Basically, all we could do was point out that we weren't fulfilling the terms of our, of our uh, commitment to the state, and then ride back to Richmond, ride back to the Board of Public Works, and complain. That was it. He would go to, maybe go to sh uh, back to the state assembly, to, to Jim Schuler, and say that the company isn't fulfilling its responsibilities. But he had no authority. So the point is, he worked for the state, but he acted as a private, as a, as a consultant providing advice with no direct authority inside the chain of command of particular road projects. And so here we have uh, a, a really excellent case example of, a, of the American engineer um, bringing together the British tradition and the French uh, to produce someone who worked autonomously as a, as a kind of learn, lone ranger role, no matter whether he was working for the state or for a private company or, 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 um, or attached to a project. Uh, our author, Robert Hunter, concludes with a long quote which illustrates the distinctive problem experienced by this French engineer Crozet and those who came after him. He writes, did Virginia taxpayers, toll payers, and turnpike stock investors receive their money's worth for their outlay? An analytical answer to this question is not feasible from the evidence considered in this essay, nor probably from any historical sources available. Yet a strong impression emerges that with but a slight improvement in the state government's management of these affairs, Virginia could have enjoyed a much better road network for the same expenditure. Virginia was fortunate beyond many, if not all, her sister states in having Claudius Crozet as principal engineer. The General Assembly employed this highly paid, $3,000 per year, expert, let him spend his entire time advising turnpike, canal, and railroad officials how to construct their works, encouraged him to inspect for faithfulness in following his instructions, and failed utterly to pass any law requiring turnpike officials to pay the slightest heed to his advice. Crozet urged the legislature repeatedly to pass such a law, but with never a response. The shortcomings of Virginia's turnpikes could not then be blamed on poor administration at the top. Rather, the General Assembly must bear the burden of responsibility for failing to take fuller advantage of its good fortune. In other words, Hunter finds himself in the end saying the United States probably needed to be a bit more French, needed to put more authority in the hands of the state and, and more authority in the hands of the agents of the state. But as we've said, in the United States, we're very skeptical of state authority, of state control. And so we gave ourselves the problem of having someone working for the state, um, but having no authority uh, in that position. The civil engineer was basically the lone ranger. <laughs>